Walt, what's up, buddy? This is your Franklin Amps Trimalux clone. And boy, what a handsome amp. So I haven't gotten in to the, to the chassis yet, but I can tell you, I can tell you with authority that the cabinet, the cabinetry here is just beautiful. This is high quality work. High quality work. Nice lightweight and resonant pine. The, the joinery is amazing. I did take a peek in the back. Handle feels nice and supple. Beautiful faceplate. It's actually really hard to find a nice quality tweed style chassis these days. And, and I love the guy's logo. It's, it's not just the same Comic Sans font that everyone else was using back in the day. I don't mind a clone. As long as it's done right and you can see that the cabinet builder, if, if it wasn't himself, and, and look, he even covered up the ground switch there. Whoever did the Tolex work here, or laid the tweed down, did it right, did a damn good job. It's gorgeous. Just feels so good in the hand. Sensual. Back to sensual work. We were in solid state purgatory for a little bit, you guys. But it looks like I, I paid the price for this month anyway. And we're back into the tube stuff again. I have a Blackface uh, Princeton Reverb coming up after this one. I have also, actually after this one, I have a 63 Vox AC30, 63 and a half maybe. That's right in uh, Lyle's wheelhouse. And we'll see what's up. Let's get her uh, spun around and uh, let's, let's actually see what the customer was experiencing. So let's flip her around, get that rear cover off and power her up and observe. So very nice quality work here. Almost um, no expense spared. Say that three times quick, uh-oh. I investigate that. I am seeing some joints that look a little uh, starved. Look at this. It's probably fine, but it's it's really not. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the standoff situation. But otherwise, high quality components. Um, wow, yeah, the, the more I look, I'm gonna have to reflow all these. Uh, nice quality wiring, uh, lead dresses is, is very nice. I would have made a, a few different decisions, but this is opinion based. This is nice quality work. Otherwise, I like that he wrapped the component leads around the tube sockets. We have uh, the artificial center top, center top there grounded onto the cathode floated above ground. We'll check this out. It's ground situation. So um, probably the knit I have to pick today would be, yeah, maybe the quality of the solder joints. And, but I don't wanna uh, get too far ahead or be overly critical um, because I've seen a lot worse. But this needs to be reflowed. I, maybe it's better on the back side, but this just looks like trouble to me. So otherwise, very nice quality, very nice build. So we'll see. All right, let's get her powered up and see if she's gonna give us any indication. Get the current limiter going. Nice jewel light, the lens. Looks like some uh, short bat style carling switches on the standby and power duty there. Pots look pretty decent. Uh, with the standby engaged, I'm getting a little bit of uh, power line hum. Just a touch. Let's get these nice looking bayonet style shields off. 
And there's a black powder coat. These are handsome. And the bases match as well, so that's nice. Let's get the volume down. Put everything else on 50%, uh, with the exception of the trim. Standby's off. Notice some microphonic tubes right away. Normal volume on 10. Quite a bit of microphonics. Let's take all the volumes off. The power tubes are noisy. Bright channel. Pretty decent quality caps. Uh, with the exception of the, the bias circuit, uh, they're using a Taiwanese brand, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, otherwise, everything else is very high quality. Using a multi turn Surmay pot to uh, manage the bias. Put both volumes on 50%. Trim gone. A little woofy. Take her out of the equation. It's incredibly clean. I don't even see any dust there. Let's see if we can agitate some of these solder joints. I, I want to go through and add solder to all of them. Let's see if we can instigate an issue. And I'm just going through each of them. It's odd, he's using a mix of uh, metal film and uh, carbon comp and then carbon film resistors here. I would have used the uh, carbon carbon films on the plates. Just not comfortable with these solder joints. I mean, they're holding up. Just not comfortable. We have two resistors in parallel off of the bias feed to make up a value uh, that he wants. Here's a, looks like a copper bus wire. Looks like, let's see, maybe like 14 gauge bus wire running on the backs of the pots. Some backup diodes on a rectifier, nice. to calculate if they're fitting for this particular tube. Everything on 12. The microphonics have gone away for whatever reason. Except when I tap the chassis. Actually, not bad. So we'll run a signal, uh, see if we can do a little bit of a torch test and see what's up. Bye. 40 hertz. The beginning of the torture test. Run into the bright channel. Those solder joints are bothering me. Get you in there without electrocuting myself. I'm gonna to touch them all up. I'm gonna to touch them all up. I wanna stress these filter caps.
gap, so I'm running it pretty low. I'm going to go a little lower here. Take it to 20. It says 20 hertz with the volume absolutely pegged. Running about one volt into the input. So 45 minutes later, tor absolutely tormenting the, the bright channel and uh, severely taxing the power amp. Made our way all the way up to a 1K. Now we're, um, we're up to 200 Hertz on the normal channel. I'm not gonna do this to you guys, but, but Walt, this is for you, buddy. Update soon. Okay, listen up. You hear that metallic sound? This is exposing some mechanically noisy 6v6s. See? This is why we do this. Doesn't mean they're bad. does mean that if these if these guys are once they're hot you sort of lose a little bit of the tolerances on the inside if the the parts aren't fully secured and then your your chances of having a short are increased and that's why we always tell you guys we always tell you guys to be gentle uh, with these amps especially after you finish your set or whatever uh, you finish playing don't bump them around because uh, the insides of, of these tubes the tolerances are just mushy. And if there's, listen to that now. If they're subjected to a, a lot of, um, a lot of impact or jarring, then your chances of again getting a short go up tremendously. So be very gentle with these. And if you could help it um, before you throw it back in a trailer or uh, back in a trunk, just let it cool down first. But um, I've been running this amp uh, for 90 minutes uh, without any issues. So uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, I, I just want to go through and, pardon me, I, I just want to go through and oh, touch up these solder joints. Even on the ex extension jack, just, it's, it's fine, but it just, it's bothering me. Really and then look at the other side of the speaker jack. If I can get you in there. Where is it? Can I get you in there? I can't even get you in there. It's, a, it's, it's the actual speaker jack. Anyway, let me let me pop this off. It's just bothering me. get it from my my perspective like it's just it's bugging me I mean I'm, I'm glad there's a mechanical uh, connection there but the, the solder is, is bugging me hmm. oh Walt it was in front of me the entire time buddy look at that and I'm going to redo all of these solder joints because they all look suspicious as well. But here's the problem right here. Unbelievable. So they're all going to get uh, a, a retouch. There are so many starved solder joints here. Even on the speaker jacks. Some, some of these are okay like this and they just don't look nice. But other ones are, these are going to be issues. So I, I need to go through and retouch all of these solder joints throughout the entire chassis, the entire thing. Just kind of disappointing, just a little disappointing. I would just uh, recommend uh, that if this company is still around, that they just slow things down. 
And don't be afraid to make nice little round solder blobs like the ladies did back in the 50s and 40s. They're just a, a, like, look at this. This guy right here is just passing through. And it, it may look better on the back, so I don't know. But um, this I can't let this pass like this, so... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll also take a peek, obviously. Look, I just found, um, ah, even on a tube socket, I just found, just found a joint on a, on a tube socket that, uh, that has no solder on it. And then here also, right on the power tube. Let's see if I can get it in there. I don't, I don't want to break this thing off, but it's right here. No solder in this guy. This one's super light. So, looks like we got our work cut out for us. This will be a beautiful lamp again. Bye.